questions to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF those switch good times are coming on even deep diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch alongs to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Welcome to episode one of Player Stories, the, sh- the series where I will take a deep dive into ex and current players, players or managers and take a deep dive into what they are, who they are and how it goes. Um, first, we'll start off the series with the GOAT, Wilfred Zaha. Dazette Wilfred Zaha was born on the 10th of November 1992 in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. He grew to the age of four with his five brothers before moving to South London, where he learned another language alongside French, which was English. He moved to Fortin Heath, only a few roads away from Sellers Park, where he started to support his local team. In an interview with Goalhanger, he said, we will see the lights, and we always wondered what was going on in there. He always loved his football and always played with his brothers in the local parks to hone his skills and it paid off as he got scouted by Crystal Palace by the age of 12. He had a tough time coming through the academy as the facilities were not as good as they as they are now, and he had many times where the coaches didn't believe in him. But he always knew he would make it. His parents supported him all the way through his career, and they helped him by always driving him to train sessions in a broken car, and many times it broke down and he had to run the rest of the way to train in. This just showed how committed he was to the cause, kept him going, showed his desire to succeed, and he finally got his big break during the Youth Cup competition where he was a standout player and earned himself an opportunity to train with the first team. He impressed there again and became a regular in the first team training sessions. On the 27th of March 2010, at the age of 17, he got his chance in the first team. Paul Hart pulled him aside in the day before the match and asked Zaha, are you ready? But he replied yes. As he would say, he was buzzing. It's me. I'm buzzing. When he got called off the bench, he had the biggest smile on his face and just went out there to go and enjoy himself against Cardiff. He scored his first goal against Leicester on August 7th of 2010, where he got his first goal and then ended up playing 44 games that season, which, to be fair, is a very successful season for him, very successful campaign. In the 2011-12 season, he was named football the Football League's Young Player of the Year, and he also got Crystal Palace's Young Player of the Season. In his first full season, he scored nine goals and got five assists in a total of 48 appearances, which is a very impressive return. In Crystal Palace's 2011 clash against Manchester United in the Carling Cup, where Darren Ambrose hit a 35-yard screamer to secure a 2-1 victory for Crystal Palace, to win against Sir Alex Ferguson's Man United team. That was the moment where the world knew who Wilfred Zaha was. In the January window of 2013, he signed for Manchester United for £10 million, which was a lot of money back then. A decision was made for him to come back to Palace to finish the season and to finish what he started. He wanted to come back, um, instead of working with Sir Alex Ferguson, he wanted to come back, help the team and see if we could actually win that promotion and I think we're all in his debt for him coming back because he was a pivotal reason why we got promoted that season. He chose that instead of working with Sir Alex Ferguson. He really made the most of it and as I said before he was an integral part of why Palace got promoted. When Glenn Murray got injured he really stepped up and added more goals, more assists and became a more pivotal player in our team. Some notable games was he scored double against Hull City and a game that no one can ever forget as a Palace fan, where he scored two against Brighton in the playoff semi-final. And even to now, some fans are saying that that was his best ever performance in a Palace shirt, his best ever footballing performance ever. And there's a reason why. Just scoring the goals he did, and the time he did, it just meant so much. And just look at the way he celebrated. It meant a lot to him as well. Um, Also, during that run in the playoffs final, he was the one that won the penalty. Great run through against Watford in extra time. And that was the penalty. Uh, Phillips converted it. And that was the thing to fire Crystal Palace into the Premier League. And I tell you what, what a way 
to leave Crystal Palace and what a way to start your new career at Manchester United. Unfortunately, this is where the story starts to turn a bit sour. As he signed, as he went back to Manchester United, Sir Alex Ferguson retired from management and David Moyes became the manager. Sometimes I do wonder if Sir Alex Ferguson was still the manager. We wouldn't be talking about Neymar. We'd be talking about Messi, Ronaldo and Wilfred Zaha. That's just my opinion, but Palace bias aside, I think it is a safe bet. During his time at Man United, David Moyes played him in every single preseason game and raved about him in all press conferences, saying how he was going to be a part of their team in the league and how he's going to help them win trophies. Unfortunately, he got minimal minutes and felt so isolated from the squad that he was forced to train with under 23s to some points in the season. Even though he always worked very hard and he never got his chance, unfortunately, it really started to play on his mental health. In Christmas that season, Doogie Friedman was in Manchester and phoned Zaha to ask him how he, how he was doing. After a short talk, he invited him to his house for Christmas and Zaha felt really appreciated that his old friends, his old coaches were still looking out for him and he asked Man United if he could go back to Crystal Palace in January. However, David Moyes denied that and shipped him out to Cardiff where the playing style didn't suit him and his, me his mental health kept on deteriorating. He didn't have a very good season out there, even though it was for only half a season. Once he got back, he really wanted that loan back to Crystal Palace. And fortunately for him, he got it. During the start of the next season, he got his loan to Palace and it was a full season loan. And it felt like a, late, a weight was lifted off his shoulders. His form picked up rapidly. He didn't start his first game. He came off the bench a few times. However, only a few games into that spell, he scored... And he looked like he was really enjoying his football again. And honestly, that's what all Palace fans wanted from him. In February of 2015, the permanent signing of Wilfred Zaha was completed. Three million rising to six million pounds plus a 25% sell-on clause where he signed a five-year deal and since then has been nothing but loyal to Crystal Palace. He has scored some incredible goals for us. He has got 453 appearances as of recording, which makes him the third highest in the club of all time, netting 89 goals, which leaves him 10th in the highest ever club scorers as of recording. He's also showed an amazing commitment to the team, showing that he is superhuman when it comes to recovering. And also outside of football, he's been an incredible human as well. He sent 10% of his wages to his Wilfred Zaha Foundation back in Ivory Coast. And that's every wage that he's ever got, I do believe. He's also got um, other uh, ventures in this country. He's got Wilfred Zaha Football Academy, which runs in, on most weekends. And also during lockdown, he has a real estate business where he was housing nurses and key workers for free, which just shows how great of a human he really is. Having two consecutive seasons of 10 goals and multiple assists and also having six goals so far this season means that he earned Crystal Palace's Player of the Month and he also earned Premier League's Player of the Month once. All of his form is so well deserved and he needed that call up to England. Uh, his future manager, Roy Hodgson, gave him that call up but unfortunately he wasn't chosen in the actual league games. He only played in a friendly and that forced him to make his switch of allegiance to in 2016 to the Ivory Coast, which he has scored some impressive goals, helped that team drastically, and he's really improved it as well, which is really impressive to see. It looks like he gets the love from the fans out there, and he's, so, he's much more appreciated out there than he would be in this England team. In 2019, he scored twice against Nam Nambia, and unfortunately, they exited that competition in the quarterfinals. Another notable goal that he scored for Ivory Coast was when he scored against Russia um, in the World Cup qualifiers, where he ran 70 yards, avoiding challenges, scoring a great goal. His contract is currently up at the end of the 2022-2023 season. He said publicly he's fully committed to Crystal Palace at the end of the season. And it's very similar to how it was when he came back to us from Man United after signing there. He wanted to see it to the end and he wanted to see Palace succeed. With rumours of him leaving at the end of the season, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. And Zaha's story is definitely not over. So let's see what he does with the rest of his career. And I really hope 
he gets all he gets to add lots of silverware to his trophy cabinet and to be recognized as the incredible player that he always has been and that the media has just never given him the spotlight and as palace fans we all know that he is such an incredible player let's see what he does with the rest of his career how many trophies will he win i'm not sure but he'll always go down as a palace legend this was the story of wilfred zaha Put in the comments if you like this type of video and also put in the comments who I should cover next, whether that be a player, a manager, you tell me. Or oh, As always, like, share, subscribe. This is JC from Eagle Eyed Football and I'll see you in the next one. Up the palace. Eagles!